So, last time we talked about phrasing. What I wanted to do today is I wanted to show some of the solutions to the fingering problems that I encountered and talk about the importance of efficient movement for clarity and speed. There's two ways that we can look at fingering at the piano. We can either think that it's something that is highly personal and different from person to person, or we can think that it's something that can be solved algorithmically, mathematically, mechanically, and that there is one single solution that is best for everyone. I think there's a little bit of truth to both, and from what I've seen, we're not actually too far off from solving fingering algorithmically. But what I want to do today is I actually want to show you three methods that I used to work on fingering for this particular piece, and, and those apply, of course, everywhere. The first is research. So in the very first video, we watched some or listened to some performances of pianists. In the case that we watched performances, it's a good idea to go back and when you're having issues with certain passages to have a look, see if you can see the hands of the pianists and how they play them, because it might be a good clue. The second method, and I think this is actually probably the most common, is just simple trial and error. So you start anywhere, really, and through each step, improve it incrementally. The third method that I think is a little bit less common but actually probably the most powerful is working backwards. If we know where we want to end, and usually that's the case, then we can read the music from right to left instead of left to right, which would be the normal way. We can read it from right to left and figure out where we need to start in order to end in the spots that we want to end in. The topic of movement at the piano is pretty complex and I've tried to think of different ways to simplify it and to put as much information in this video as possible, but it's just too difficult. Most of my information on piano technique comes from this book. It's been a complete game changer for me. I'm starting to experiment with teaching some of these ideas to my students and it's actually going a lot better than I expected. They're grasping the concepts quite well. When I've absorbed these ideas and I've had more experience teaching them, I will share everything here, but for now, I'll try to keep it relatively simple. There are three hand movements and two finger movements that enabled me to get to the speed and comfort that I'm at at the moment with this piece. We're gonna try a different angle for this. Let's start with the three hand movements. We have the scoop, the push, and pronation. We can practice those as triads. We can practice those with five note clusters. And then to go up or down, we can start to whip our hand. Now, if we look at the finger movements, we have two of them. We have the pulling finger and the pushing finger. The way that we can practice those is by doing a single note, and then we can move on to longer clusters and snap our fingers. You really want to spend some time with these movements in isolation before you try to apply them. I've been practicing these for months before even starting to put them into this piece. So when I actually started to do that, it was quite comfortable and straightforward. Although some passages did require a little bit more choreographing. 
When you look at mastery of a passage through the lens of technique, then achieving it is simply a case of first combining simple movements and then learning those more complex movements at speed. This process, I'm sure you'll realize, takes a while. Originally, I wanted to get the section up to 130 beats per minute, but unless I want to be on this for the next few months, I think <laughs> I will lower my expectations. So at the moment, it's sitting at 120 for hands separately. So when I put it hands together, we'll see how close to that we get. I'm not really concerned with the speed because I've already learned so much from this piece. And I think that at this point, trying to get it faster won't teach me as much as I could learn from another piece. So I'm pretty keen to get started on something new. But before I do that, I do need to spend more time on two more things. One, of course, putting it hands together. And then the second thing that I want to look at is ornamentation. That'll be the topic of the next video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.